Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Glanfield, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at lens whacking, or free lensing, some people call it. This is an awesome effect. It's actually really easy to do and to learn, and I'm gonna show you guys some of the things that I like to do, how I use it, and once you guys know how to do it and practice it a little bit, you'll be able to use it for photo, for video work, and it's just an awesome effect that's really easy to do, and it adds so much to your video and photos. So, what is free lensing, and what are we gonna to need to do to to perform this effect. You're gonna need a camera and a body that basically separate from themselves. Not all lenses will work with this effect. How do you tell if it's gonna work or not? Well, a great way to tell is if you connect a camera and you adjust your settings like aperture settings and as soon as you disconnect the lens from the camera body and the aperture changes, then that's a good indicator that it might be a little bit trickier to do lens um, whacking. It'll have, some lenses have this little metal piece right here that controls the aperture and when it disconnects from the camera it'll shoot down and it'll close the aperture and it's going to be hard to control it that's why i like to use some vintage lenses for this it works really well because you can control your focus distance and you can control your aperture all manually so that's a couple things to just look at your gear and see if it's going to be possible for you to do now free lensing basically what you're going to be doing is tilting this way or this way, the plane of focus. Now, the plane of focus is right now at my eye level because the autofocus is telling the plane of focus to be at my eye level here. So my hands should be in focus right now. If I move them forward, they'll come out of focus. And if I move them behind my head, they'll be out of focus as the background is. Now, if I change that plane of focus, it would be by putting my hand there. Now the plane of focus is at my hand. So my hand beside it should be in focus, but as soon as I move it back, you'll notice that my hand goes out of focus. And then as I move my hand forward, it comes into focus. So what free lensing does is by detaching the lens, you've actually have control of that plane of focus. So if I move the lens out like this, right now it's still very flat. As you can see, it's still square, but as soon as I tilt it, this little section is gonna be one focus plane, and this little section over here is gonna be a different focus. So the further away you move an object from the lens, the closer the focus distance is going to be and the closer it is, the further it's going to be. I know it's kind of background and it's kind of hard to do, so this is what I recommend. You just grab your camera and you just go and test it out. That's going to be the easiest way for you to learn, trying to wrap your head around it, just visually looking at me do it. It's going to be a little hard. So what I recommend always doing is go to like a brick wall or finding some wall with texture, like a stucco wall that you can actually see the focus come in and out. So that's one of the ways that you can practice it and become better at free lensing. Now, how do we hold the camera and lens? You have lots of these things and you don't wanna be dropping them around. One thing I always do is put my hand and let the camera rest on my hand. The next thing you're gonna be doing is detaching the lens from your camera body. Once you do that, now you have control of the lens with this hand and the camera with this hand. Now, what I always like to do is keep one finger down here, I don't know if you can see that, one finger here attached as my pivot. So it's always anchored to my camera so I can tell where the camera is and where the lens is at all times with one hand. There's one thing I like to do so that I can separate the whole lens, but I always at one point, I have contact with the camera so I don't know where the camera is and where the lens is at all times. And then my thumb and index over here do the twisting and turning as you can see there. So. Before you take it out, you have to do some things to the lens. If it's a digital lens that is controlled by the camera, you're gonna to have to set inside the camera the focus distance to infinity. That means that the focus distance is not close up like it is right now, and it's not mid like my face is, but it's all the way to infinity as far as far that it can focus. So you can do that. If it's a manual lens, you can do it right on here. As you can see, I'll take, take it all the way to infinity. And with this other manual lens, I can take that all the way to infinity. But this camera, since this is an electronic um, focusing system, I have to do that in the camera. So once I set it to infinity, then you take it away. Of course, you wanna set your aperture to whatever you wanna change it, because if you can't change the aperture once it's disconnected, because it's electronic, then you can't, you're can't. you gonna be stuck on a wrong aperture. So make sure you set your aperture, the right aperture that you want to do, unless, of course, you have something that you can change manually, like this lens. Once you do all those changes, then it's time to separate it. Once you separate from your camera body, then you're gonna start playing around with tilting. Now, I would just start by tilting it one way and just seeing what comes in and what goes out of focus and then tilting it the other way. Now, if your camera has it, I would strongly recommend turning focus peaking on 
that will really help you to know what's in focus and what's not. Focus peaking was a feature in a lot of new digital cameras and it'll show you what's in focus and what's out of focus by showing you what's red or what's yellow depending on what color you set. So that's really, really been helpful when free lensing with digital cameras. Now, when you're shooting video, you'll notice that you'll have some of this shake kind of moving here. I always suggest that in when you're doing video rather than photo, try to lock it and just keep it in one spot. You might get excited and start tilting and moving and panning and doing all sorts of different things with flares and it's, it can get really fun, but it can get overwhelming in the video. When you start looking back at your footage, you're gonna have this very dizzy effect and your whole plane of focus is moving. It kind of looks like everything's very dizzy. So what I suggest is keeping it focused to one spot. So if you wanna have this tilt shift effect, you can have it just on one spot, you hold it and then you move your camera all together so that you have that effect only happening there. And then you can shift it, change it to something else and then move it and keep it all in one spot so that it helps to keep the effect a little bit more subtle and not so in your face and very dizzy effect. So that's something that helps. Another thing when you're shooting video that helps to remove this jittery effect is putting your camera in slow motion so that when you stretch it out in the computer, you get those jitters in slow motion so it kind of smooths them out a little bit. That's been helpful sometimes if you're shooting something that doesn't have to be in real time. Go ahead and slow it down and it helps a lot with that jitter. A couple other things that you can do with free lensing that I like to play around with is one is flares. Flares are super fun when you're doing uh, free lensing. By separating the lens from the camera body, you're allowing light to hit the sensor and because of that, it will give you a flare. So the flares are really fun to play around with. Sometimes they can be a little overwhelming. So just be careful not to open it all the way up. And if you are getting too much light, you can sometimes using this hand over here, cover it or using your thumb and just wrap it around and your index over here, you can kind of cover the gap so that the light doesn't slip in. You can kind of control how much light you let in, but sometimes in some, some situations, you just can't do anything about it and it'll just blow out your image. In those cases, you might not be able to do it. Maybe you can get a friend to stand in front of the sun and kind of block that light. Another thing that I love to do with free lensing in video especially is the split diopter effect. Now, it's not really split diopter. Split diopter has a more of a definition between the two because if it, it, because it's two lenses. If you look up in Google split diopter, you'll see that it has one plane is in one focus and the other one is another one and it kind of meets there and it's kind of this hard line. This one kind of is more of a gradient because you're tilting the plane of focus, not splitting it. But it's still a really cool effect to do. What you're doing here is actually having, well, you would understand by tilting it here, you're having two planes of focus, one here and one here. So by strategically placing your subjects in a way that you can tilt it, you can actually get two different things in focus, one in the foreground and one in the background. Another awesome thing that you can do with free lensing is you change the minimum focusing distance on all your lenses. This is really cool because sometimes some of these vintage lenses like this one and some of the other ones I like to play around with don't have a great minimum focusing distance. So you can't really shoot macro photography, even actually some of these better lenses, you can turn them into macros just by separating them. So if I'm trying to shoot something that's really close, just by separating that, you can change that minimum focusing distance and you can turn some of these lenses into macro lenses and do some really interesting macro photography or video work with using your normal lenses that you always use. Well, those are all the tips that I have for you guys today for free lensing. I hope those were helpful to you. Go ahead and try it out. It's so much fun. You can get some really interesting photos and video for this. Subscribe to this channel if you guys aren't already. I'll be making more videos like this, weekly videos. So make sure to like this video and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.